Okay, we're looking at cash flow statements, this time from the 2015 paper. Uh, let's see, quickly check, it's question six from the 2015 paper. So I start off by laying out the blank document as I usually do in every question. Okay, starting off with the abridged profit statement, we'll come to what's included in that in a second. And then the rest of the, the things that may happen, okay. I have a couple of examples of things in there. I'm just going to delete them for now. So I'll go and do my rough work first. So the rough work is to try and explain what has happened to my fixed assets. So starting off here, my opening balance for my fixed assets 2013 is 470. And my closing balance is 640. And I'm trying to explain what has happened there? Okay, we'll come back to those in a second. Provision for depreciation starts off an opening figure of 80 grand and it's got a closing figure of 200 grand. And we want to try and explain what happened there. Okay, um, and then there will be a disposal, and this is this rough work here is to try and work out how much money we paid in interest. We may have been charged a certain amount as an expense, but we need to work out how much we're paid. We'll come to that now in a minute. So, looking at our rough work here, uh, I'm trying to see what happened to my fixed assets. So it says fixed assets cost 50, which total depreciation 25, and provided were sold for 30. So I'll put that in here. So those assets cost 50. Uh, those would be taken out of the fixed asset account. It says the total depreciation was 25 of the thing I sold. So that's going to be taken out of the um, the provision for depreciation account and actually that disposal is going to be taken out to minus out of that. Um, so the provision for depreciation is minus 25. So that means the time that we sold it the thing was worth 50 minus 25 so it was worth 25 grand and they were sold for 30. So that means I sold them for five grand more than they're worth so I made a profit of five grand. And I might as well, uh, I'll, I'll be putting all of those numbers in now in a second. Now, let's just see what happened to my fixed assets. So the fixed assets here, it says they start off worth 470. We got rid of 50 grand worth, so it should have been worth 420. Um, but it's actually worth 640. Now, just quickly checking, is there a revaluation happened here? No, there's no revaluation reserve here in our finance buy. So all of the difference, the missing figure, is explained by us buying new fixed assets. So we say again, we started with 470, got rid of 50 grand worth, so it should have been 420. We have 640, so that means we must have spent 220 grand buying new fixed assets. Now, um, because there's no revaluation, uh, the revaluation is zero in our provision for depreciation, because obviously if we revalue something we cancel all the depreciation so all of the difference between the opening and closing figure except for this 25 is explained by the depreciation expense so that means that our opening figure was 80 take away 25 for the thing that we got rid of so that means that it should have been 55 it's actually 200 so that means there's 145 grand in depreciation that's the depreciation expense so let's put those numbers into where they go in the rest of the document. So my depreciation, uh, this is in land, it's just depreciation expense, is 145. And that's going to be added back into my operating profit. Because I want to find my profit, uh, I want to try and find the cash generated from operations. The cash that we got from the day-to-day -day operations. Depreciation doesn't involve us spending cash this year. We spent cash years ago when we bought the thing, so it's a non-cash income. We take those non-cash incomes like a profit on disposal. In this case, we made a profit of five grand when we sold that fixed asset. That would have been that profit on disposal would have been added to our operating profit. So when we put it in here, we put it in as a minus. We take it out. Okay, depreciation would have been an expense, which made our profit lower. So to get take it out, so because it's a non-cash item, we add, we add it to our operating profit. And I haven't come to our operating profit just yet. Now, um, then we spent 220 grand buying fixed assets. 
and we have our profit dealt with, and we've got our depreciation expense. So if we go into down here, capital and expenditure, so purchase of fixed assets, and that was 220 grand, and we, it's a minus because we spent money. And then we sold fixed assets and we got 30 grand for those when we sold them. So that's disposal. And that's a plus. Okay, we put in the amount of cash that we actually got from it. Okay. Um, I'll go and deal with our other piece of rough work here, which is to work out the amount of money paid on interest tax and dividends. Um, and I'm going to be putting that into my bridge profit now in a minute. So, um, I have a quick read here. Uh, 60,000 shares, no, uh, fixed assets we've dealt with. Debentures were issued on the 1st of the 1st. So that means the debentures, the 10% debentures I have here, I had all 180 grand for the full year because the new debentures, the difference between 130 and 180. All of those new ones were issued at the beginning of the year, so we would have depreciated them for the full year. So the depreciation, or the, sorry, the interest expense is 18 grand, which is 10% of 180 grand. So I have that figure for the full year. Um, now, at the beginning of the year, did I have any interest due? It didn't say anything about interest due at the beginning or the end. It's not mentioned as a current liability. So therefore, the amount we paid was 18 grand. Because we have nothing due at the end and nothing due at the beginning. So the amount we were charged is the amount we paid. So let's look at tax. Tax 47 grand was owing at the beginning of the year. And at the end of the year, we have 55 grand owing. So uh, tax charged was 65. So we owed 47, 65 was added on. We still owe 55, okay? So that means we paid uh, 57 grand. So 47 plus 65 is 112. Uh, of the 112, 55 is still left to be paid. So that means we only paid 57 grand. Uh, and then we look at our dividends. Dividends paid during the year amounted to 55, so it's told us. 55 grand was paid on dividends. Uh, now, and we have ordinary dividends there. I'm just quickly checking here. There were no dividends owed at the beginning, so the dividends expense is 55 grand. None owed at the beginning and none owed at the end. So these figures are going to be going into my abridged profit and loss statement now, and I'll put this into my cash flow document. So our interest paid is minus 18 grand. Our tax paid is minus uh, 57 grand. And our equity dividends paid is uh, minus 55 grand. So um, that's that. Let's go and look at our bridge profit and loss statement. So here I'm going to be working backwards to find the original operating profit which I will then be able to put into the second document. So my profit and loss at the beginning of the year is, there we go, so three, five, six, five hundred. And at the end of the year, my profit and loss balance is three, six, one, five hundred. So that means that my retained profit has to be the difference between the two of those. So that means we have five grand retail profit. We had 55 grand in dividends. So that means the net profit after tax, before I paid my dividends, must have been 60 grand. These two numbers add together. So 60 minus 55 is five. That five is added on to my operating profit and loss, so then I close it. My taxation, so that's my taxation expense was 65 grand. Okay, so if we add those two together, 125, this figure before tax, the interest was 18 grand. 
So the operating profit was um, 125 uh, plus uh, 18 grand. So 143. So that goes in here. Now, and I've got my profit on disposal. So my stocks, I had 295 at the beginning of the year. I now have 350. So stock has gone up by 55, which means I have 55 grand more cash tied up in stock. So that cash is not available. Okay, so that's that. Uh, debtors. And the debtors, no, I'm going to take the overall net figure in debtors. Okay, so that's 110 minus 55, and it has gone up. So I'm going to take, do the net of these two, take it away from the net of these two. So we see our debtors has uh, increased, and the figure is going to be, let's see, 161,500. Take away the difference uh, between these two. So I have 161,500. Take away 104,500. So the debt has gone up by 57 grand, and that means that people owe me 57 grand more than they did before, which means I have I've been given less cash. So that means I have 57 grand less cash. Now, what's happened to creditors? The creditors were 235, they've gone down. So if their creditors went down, it means I must be paying them the money. So I have less cash now as a result. So that's gonna be 235, no, sorry, 202. So 235. So we have 33 grand less cash. So the cash from operations, add all of that together. So 138, so cash from operations is 138. So starting the cash flow statement document. We've dealt with the interest, we've dealt with tax, purchase fixed assets and dividends. So the cash before financing is adding Cash from operations uh, and all those pluses and minuses. So cash before financing is minus 182. Now, government securities. I bought some government securities, so that means that I would have uh, got rid of some money, so I made that purchase. So that would have taken some cash out of my current account so I would have lost cash when I bought those and they are 56 grand so I'm minus 56. Financing debentures they went up by 50. Well, that's a, uh, yes I got in cash so it's a plus when I got a loan I got extra cash come in issuing shares 60,000 shares were issued at 125 a share and that should explain the 60,000 increase there and the premium of uh, 15. So that's a total of uh, what is it? 75 grand. And that's a plus because we got cash from it. So the increase in cash is the cash for financing all the way down to the increase in shares. So my increase in cash in this case is a decrease. See how by laying out the document blank first, it makes it much easier to do the question. So you spend a couple of minutes laying it out and then you just throw the numbers into it. And even if you don't get your maths done the way I'm doing it, okay, you're still gonna have most of the marks because you put the numbers into the question. I keep on saying that. So my bank at the beginning of the year and again if this proof doesn't work we're not going to get overly worried about it because uh, we may have made a maths mistake and I'd rather get the question done first so let's see so in this case we've got cash and bank so I'm going to put those two together cash and bank at the beginning of the year and cash and bank at the end of the year so cash and bank at the beginning of the year, we had um, 60 grand in cash 
and a 31 grand bank overdraft because it's a creditor. So that means we had 29 grand at the beginning of the year. At the end of the year, we had 34 grand in cash and we had 18 grand of a bank overdraft. So that's 34, take away 18. Uh, so that means I have a decrease in cash. And that's going to be this number take away that. Now, so, okay. I'm just trying to see. I've, I'm have i 100 grand out. Now, 100 grand is a nice round number, so it makes me think that maybe I made a mistake with my math somewhere, a very simple mistake. And I'm going to look at my fixed assets. I think maybe that was where my mistake was. So, 420, let me check, 420, 640 is 220. That does sound right. Um, opening and closing there. I can't see anything obvious where I've gone wrong. Um, maybe it's just simply an adding or subtracting mistake. Um, oh, that was correct. So I'm going to leave it. Okay, I've made a mistake. I've probably just added in the number, an extra 100,000. I shouldn't have, so I'm just not going to get bothered about it. Now move on to my uh, reconciliation of cash. So I know my increase, um, in this case, it's my decrease in cash. Decrease in cash is um, 13. Now, I bought government securities, which what this here is, I'm trying to look at my net debt, how indebted we are. So we're basically going to compare um, the money I've got in either cash here, okay, or government securities in, in kind of bank accounts, different bank accounts. I'm going to compare money in, in bank accounts with the money that we owe, which is debentures, and also we owe money here in the bank. Uh, so we have a bank overdraft. So, but I'm basically going to compare. Uh, and look and see what has changed. So I bought government securities, which means I have more money in a type of bank account. Okay, it's not a bank account, but it's it acts like a bank account, pays interest, etc. And I have more uh, debentures, which means I'm more in debt. I have more loans. So that makes my uh, indebtedness worse. So that's why I put it as a minus. So I have more money in a bank account, but I also owe more money there. So the change in net debt is going to be adding all of these together. So I'm seven grand uh, worse off. Now, the net debt at the beginning is how much money I uh, have in bank accounts at the beginning and how much I owe in bank accounts at the beginning compared to how much I owe at the end to see the change. So at the beginning, I have in my bank, so I'll just go through this. So I have, first of all, 60 grand in cash, I have no government securities. I have 31 grand of an overdraft, that's a minus. And I owe 130 grand uh, in debentures. So that's my indebtedness at the beginning and indebtedness at the end. I have 34 grand in cash. I owe, uh, sorry, I have government securities as well, 56, so I'll add that as well. I'll take away the money uh, that we owe for our bank overdraft, because it's a minus, it's the money we owe. And I'll take away my uh, debenture, which is 180 grand. And my change in net debt is uh, that, take away. Six minus seven grand. I should leave it like that. So I'm seven grand more in debt than I was before. So that's minus seven grand. So that works out. Okay. I hope that makes uh, logical sense. And obviously, I have made a mistake uh, somewhere in that. Spent two minutes looking at it, but I'm not going to spend any more time because I 